Dear friends, so in, uh, we had uh, some uh, three sessions uh, earlier uh, and uh, in the three sessions we discussed the poem. We just go, went for uh, a critical appreciation of the very uh, poem and now of course uh, we have the fourth uh, session. In this session we are just uh, looking at the important uh, questions and answers which are of course included in the very uh, text signatures and this, this particular session uh, is of course specifically for examination so you must be very sure about the answers of the questions given at the uh, end of the uh, text so we will be just discussing the questions right now and uh, once it's over we'll just wind up this uh, particular poem and we'll move to the next lesson and the next lesson will be of course uh, the uh, essay by uh, the Canadian uh, indigenous writer and professor Janet Armstrong. So before that, we will just discuss the questions and answers of uh, the word of Pablo Neruda. First, we will look at the uh, short questions. First question, what glitters like colored stones? Answer is vowels. Vowels glitter like colored stones. Next question, about what does Neruda say? I bow to them. Uh, Neruda uh, speaks about words that he bowed bow to them. The Neruda would bow to the words. Third question, a chain of mountains in Spanish is termed Cordilleras. So Cordilleras is the term in Spanish for mountains. Uh, next question, Neruda compares words to a healing stone called a gate. A gate is the answer, a G-A-T-E. A gate we have here, a gate. It is in fact ornamental stones. So Neruda compares words to a healing stone called a gate. Fifth question, in honor of which Czechoslovak poet did Neruda adopt his pseudonym? The answer is Jan Neruda, J-A-N Neruda, N-E-R-U-D-A. So he was of course a, an admirer of this uh, Czechoslovak poet, Jan Neruda. And uh, in honor of that uh, Czech poet, Jan Neruda, uh, Neruda took this name, Pablo Neruda. How does an idea undergo a complete change according to Neruda? So uh, in this poem, Neruda speaks about the power of words. When we change one word from one phrase or sentence, uh, of course, we shift the uh, space or rather the very location of a word, meaning changes. Say, for example, you have a sentence like, I like ice cream. So when you just uh, uh, change that, wor uh, that, that word like uh, with hate, it would be I hate ice cream. So likewise, you can of course have, uh, uh, with, by shifting the position of words, you get a number of uh, idea, an idea undergo a completion. Similarly in a word, in a word you have, you have of course uh, bet, B-E-T bet. You just change that b and you fix their p, you get pet. So bet bet can become pet. Similarly, you have uh, I like ice cream, I hate ice cream. So similarly, this type of this is in fact uh, in uh, linguistics you have the very concept elaborated by Noam Chomsky, the professor of uh, the Institute of Massachusetts uh, Institute of Technology, and he came forward with his concept of uh, transformational generative grammar grammar. It is of course right, the language is, uh, yeah, 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 we have uh, every language is of course a, uh, uh, an organization of a set number of, a finite number of signs and with this finite number of utterances or uh, signs we can make infinite number of utterances. Same is the concept by shifting the uh, place of a phoneme or a morpheme or a word, we get new ideas. So how does an idea undergo complete change? The answer is shifting the place of the word. Next question, what are vowels compared to? So we have a number of similes. In all these similes, vowels are compared to. Number one, uh, it is compared to stone. Later, it is compared to silver fish. Similarly, it is again compared to, of course, uh, fruit, algae, a gate, number of comparisons. Like, then again, form, thread, metal, lot of comparisons. Now, the next question is, what was left behind by the conquistadors? So the conquistadors or the conquerors moving from one place to the other, from, uh, from uh, Europe to 
അമേരിക്ക യൂറോപ്പ് ടു ബ്രിട്ടൻ ബ്രിട്ടൻ ടു ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് ദി ഏഷ്യൻ കൺട്രീസ് ബ്രിട്ടൻ ടു ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് ആഫ്രിക്കൻ കൺട്രീസ് സോ വാട്ട് ഡിഡ് ദി കോൺക്വിസ്റ്റഡോസ് ലീവ് ബിഹൈൻഡ് ദ കോൺക്വിസ്റ്റഡോസ് ലെഫ്റ്റ് ബിഹൈൻഡ് വേർഡ്സ് നെക്സ്റ്റ് list a few similes used by neruda to compare words so we have a number of similes words are compared to colored stones silver fish fruit algae a gate then of course uh, we have uh, uh, comparisons like uh, the, uh, the 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 beautiful melting icicles just hanging down dangling down from top of the cave underneath a mountain similarly plenty of expressions like uh, yeah uh, we have all that uh, here like a right uh, like slivers of polished wood like coals pickings from a shipwreck gifts from the waves lot of uh, comparisons like that now the next question i leave them in poem like stalactites explain so we have of course uh, the uh, uh, expression i leave them in poem like stalactites so them i leave them i leave what i leave words in stalactite li like stalactite what is stalactite stalactite i just told you right now it is of course those hanging icicles uh, in a cave uh, of course uh, maybe on one side of a huge mountain so the icicle the, the scene of the icicles melting down from the roof of the cave just dangling down melting down and dripping dripping down dipping down it's a very beautiful scene and when the poet uses words in his poetry those words become beautiful like an example of course is the entire extract the word next question discuss the domestic images that surface in the passage so i as i said in my previous sessions the poem rather the extract uh, the word is enriched with a number of totally so much uh, uh, rather decorated with ornated with domestic images domestic images means household uh, related to whatever we are familiar with and we have of course uh, images from cooking images from of course uh, gardening images from cleaning uh, right uh, the the vegetables we collect uh, images again from right uh, like like uh, images like making a, some juice just biting uh, into the uh, uh, apple or fruit so similarly a number of household so like like in in cooking you cook something you just decorate it you just garnish it and all that we have there i stir them i shake them i drink them i gulp them down i mash them i garnish them okay so similarly cooking again right uh, you have there so it's very very beautiful so you have a number of uh, household images similarly objects again from household objects to things you keep in your house like uh, Uh, you have vegetable you have of course uh, uh, things like uh, oily objects there then again you have of course ivory okay uh, then of course a lot of uh, uh, dish uh, reference to dish making preparing dish and all these are all household uh, images and uh, wonderful poem enriched with a lot of domestic images now the next question explain they carried off the gold and left us the gold this is of, in fact uh, the most essential uh, sentence they carried off the gold the conquerors the colonizers who came to the country to the colonies of course took the wealth the first gold refers to the wealth of the colonies they took away all the wealth of the colonies and of course uh, they left us the gold and the second gold is it is the gold that is of course the abstract gold that is language language is gold language is like the yellow metal and uh, the conquerors came to the colonies looted and plundered and uh, took away all the wealth of the colonies but left behind their language and the poet is happy that we have new languages in each and every colony or country now we move on to the next question analyze the poetic quality of the passage right the extract it it is totally poetic from the very beginning till the end and uh, it is poetic because uh, it is written with beautiful uh, uh, poetic language it is written a poetic language and of course uh, it is written with a number of uh, 
figures of speech. You have a number of figurative expressions, figures of speech, like you come across more than 10 similes and you have a number of metaphors. You have also personification and uh, a number of very powerful images, household images, surrealistic images. Surrealistic images are images that take us to, of course, the whatever happened in our unconscious and our subconscious. So things like, uh, yeah, certain things that you do not uh, you do not see in the real world, we have uh, in this poem. So number of uh, and all these similes, metaphors, uh, and uh, the very beautiful poetic language make this poem really a wonderful uh, poem with a lot of uh, poetic quality. Now we move on to the next question, very important question. What are the surrealistic elements in the passage? And we must understand the fact that surrealism, in fact, is a kind of art form that developed in Europe, surrealism. And uh, surrealism uh, is, of course, right, uh, you have painting in surre uh, surrealism, we have in painting, we also have surrealism in, of course, uh, sculpture, music, and uh, the very persons, uh, Salvador Dali, uh, Picasso, all these painters just began experimenting with uh, uh, surrealism and we know that surrealism is of course right, uh, 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 it is, surrealism is in fact uh, an attempt to artists, painters, sculptors, poets, writers, etc. They are just trying to represent the unreal world okay the you have the subconscious and the unconscious and the conscious and whatever you have in the conscious is of course the real and whatever you have in the subconscious and the unconscious are unreal so all those terrifying fears dreams nightmares bizarre grotesque images grotesque fears etc maybe you don't you don't uh, you have certain things which have no logic Okay, maybe you see that a huge lion is just jumping on you and it's going to attack you. All right. Or rather you see that your, your great grandpa is coming to you. Your great grandpa, you do not see him at all. But you know that that is your great grandpa. Or such kind of uh, things that you, you are not associated with, but still maybe you could be associated with. So certain images, dreamlike images, again, very, very bizarre and fearful images. And of course, uh, a lot of uh, uh, images and uh, expressions which can come from the depth of the deep inside our mind and uh, of course uh, so surrealism is of course rather uh, sometimes it is rather obscure not easy to understand uh, such such expressions we have here again right like uh, like look at this one we have the expression here that is yeah uh, uh, they they live in the buyer words live in the buyer words live in the buyer this is surrealistic expression words live in the buyer buyer is of course that mound of woods on which the dead body is cremated and how can this is something terrifying you have the dead body lying on the wood it is being burned and the dead body just being uh, cremated melting down the smell of flesh burning smell of bond this is surrealism this is surrealism and we have plenty of such expressions here and that is, of course, all this. Why, why do we have surrealistic images here in this poem? Because in order to help us understand what happened in human history. Human history has not been a history of happiness alone, peaceful incidents alone. Human history has been a history of uh, uh, revolution, massacre, butchery, murder, uh, plundering and looting. And all this is done through language. And as all this is happening, language is also witnessing everything. Everything is uh, just uh, recorded in language. And now we come to, of course, the next uh, question. That is the essay question. The word is Neruda's tribute to his uncontrollable passion for poetry. Discuss. So this beautiful poem from the beginning till the end, the extract from the very beginning till the end and uh, end helps us understand the power of word. In the very beginning, poet says that, okay, our singing, our, our, our speech, our dreams, our thought, everything is with uh, words, word, word is everything. The entire universe exists in word. So we have ideas, okay? All our ideas are just uh, replicated in, represented or delineated in words. And it is because of words that universe is there. Everything is in the words. And thereafter he says, what uh, is a word to a poet? What is a word to a writer? A word is 
life to a poet. Word is life breath to a poet. Word is like maybe a lover to the poet. The poet is eagerly waiting, waiting, waiting for the right word to come. When the right word comes, he's in a jubilant mood, joyous mood. He's, he's drunk and he's just uh, dancing in ecstasy. That is, of course, the very, very consequence or effect or impact of the power of word. Beautiful, energetic. The right word can, of course, just fill the heart and mind of the poet. And this poem is, of course, uh, enriched with a number of poetic expressions, beautiful images, similes, beautiful metaphors. Uh, then again, a lot, a lot of uh, surrealism. And, of course, references to what happened in human history, like the movement of uh, people from one place to the other. That's what happened in the history of human civilization. Different civilizations we have. And all the civilization is just starting from the very original father and mother. That is, of course, our an ancient uh, uh, men, the forefathers, right? And along with these people, language is also spreading everywhere. And maybe everybody dies. People die. People, our ancestors died. Poets die, writers die, you and I will die one day. But if you have written something, if you have said something and that what you wrote or what you said, if it stays in the mind of the people who listen to you or if it is just kept in the books you have written or if it is just uh, kept anywhere in any device, words are going to live forever. That is the great power of word and uh, great writers, poets, like Pablo Neruda does the same thing and he is just asserting it very effectively in this beautiful extract from his memory, the word. So with this, we wind up our discussion of uh, Pablo Neruda's, the extract from his memory. Thank you so much for listening. May God bless you all. Thank you.